Hello, YouTube, and for those of you who are still with me, welcome back to a new video. Um, I'm trying something new, as you can see. My hands. So you can see and hopefully hear the keyboard interactions um, while we do this. So. What I wanted to do today, I'll just there we go, turn on the microphone. What I wanted to do, not microphone, speakers. Oh, anyway, uh, what I wanted to do is um, introduce you to a website uh, that's about coding, as you notice right here. Hmm. Excuse me. Um. Yeah, it's called Code Academy, and for those of you who does not know, this site is about learning programming skills, and they have some lessons lying um, on their page. So as you can see here, I have completed HTML and CSS and JavaScript which means I, well, from this you get to know the basics, you don't really get to know how to program it, so to be a programmer you have to get experience and read other people's code, but nonetheless I've gone through them, um, and I thought we would do one of the challenges uh, in here from... Hmm. Oh my! Um, one of the challenges from their site and make um, this interactive website right here. So let's go ahead and click start. I'll just full screen this. Hopefully, this disturbs us less. So. Um, well, we can read through the introduction. Introduction. Web pages with made with HTML and CSS display static content. They don't respond to user actions like clicking a mouse or typing a key. JavaScript and jQuery are used to make web pages interactive. JavaScript is a programming language used to create web pages that change in response to user actions. jQuery is a collection of pre-written JavaScript code that lets us easily create interactive effect effects on a site. Um, click on more in the navigation arrows in the web page content to the right. So we can see here this these arrows uh, makes our site interactive. And my assumption is that we are going to make something similar. So, your first program. Click on Flipboard at the top of the web page. To the right, the web page has a drop-down menu which shows and hides when you click Flipboard. And that is absolutely true. The interaction is, uh, the interaction is made with JavaScript and jQuery. Alright then. So we got the HTML, the basic HTML down here to the right. And <coughs> for those of you who don't know, um, HTML is short for hypertext markup language. And it's used, as they said in the introduction, to display static contents like pictures or lists or links or something like that. Um, and CSS, which is cascading style sheets, are used for making it look better and more pretty. And JavaScript and jQuery, which are included here. Um, I used to 
will make the interactions on the website more dynamic um, and jQuery also has some backups for um, not backups there it, it can help uh, CSS and HTML elements along with some cool animations although through HTML5 and CSS3 which are the newest versions uh, they've made transitions and other cool stuff that makes some of the jQuery plugins obsolete but we will we will hopefully see that later so we include the style sheet with the CSS style sheet here in the header of the HTML document uh, and down here in the body we can include the scripts right uh, yeah and it's done like it's shown on the picture I'm not going to read through all this because I know what it is So we'll just move right along. When you click clipboard, it doesn't appear. You're right. Uh, to fix this, below the script element, add a second script. All right. Let's go ahead and do that. All right. My keyboard settings are wrong. Just a second. There we go. I like to code on a English international keyboard layout because well obviously the all the buttons are made uh, with programmers in mind because they made keyboards to program on so why you get you you get the idea uh, so we have a script tag here script source which SRC is short for mm. and they say up here that the source should be this so we will just copy it and yeah stuff happened so this is prob this is probably a, a Google shorthand link to the JavaScript um, no jQuery more likely I don't know mm, the same well, anyway it's a shorthand link um, to a JavaScript file where there's some pre-defined functions that take care of the drop-down menu here you can make this in in um, pure CSS3 right now, I've seen a lot of videos on how to do that. Not that I'm any good at it, but I think that's amazing that just maybe a year ago or something like that, you had to use um, JavaScript and jQuery to get something like this done every time, and you couldn't really do it with CSS and you know, what web, web, web consort consortium. A hard, tough word to say. The World Wide Web Consortium uh, decided that this was used so often that it was necessary to actually build this into CSS3, which I think is really, really neat. So yeah, I think that was that's really really neat. Um, okay, so now we get into some code. This is JavaScript code right here. Lives in file app.js. Okay, we'll 
look at the code, how it's organized, and then we will find out how it works. This is the main function. Mm, it tells the computer to do something. Yes. Down here, I suspect. Yeah. And this code uses jQuery to run main the main method, the main fu function, once the web page is fully loaded. So this is what is um, done when the main function is is called, and the main function is called when the document is ready. And by document, we typically say uh, the website when the website is ready. All right. Uh, the main function is made up by three parts. Mm. So we had the drop down toggle, which is a link or an anchor tag, which has the class drop down toggle. Mm. And selects that. And on a click, runs the function drop down menu dot toggle. Yeah, that is basically just explain what I just said. Uh, and if clicked then it will well it will switch between toggled and not toggled. Which is pretty much just another expression for on and off. It just cut down to one single word. Um When you click the flipboard, the drop down menu, but it doesn't go away now. Okay. It's because we have only used the show function here. And the show function, is, I guess, is something that's defined by jQuery. Um, so if we just change this to toggle instead and run it again, it will work. It's like magic. So there's some JavaScript magic going on behind here when this is called, uh, which I guess it basically just disposes of the model, uh, not the model, it, it disposes uh, what's underneath here, um, this div right here, it just throws it away. Okay. So we have the document that ready, this fellow right here, and well, it tells that it can you can only run the function when the site is ready. <coughs> okay, this program should toggle the mid flipboard so I drop down. However, the program has four mistakes. Find and fix the box to get the uh, drop down to work again. Um, all right. So we have to call a function here. First off, that's one. And the menu and the toggle are switched around. To, I think I'm not sure. <laughs> we need the jQuery select down here as three, and this one is closed. I think. Ah, there it's close. Okay, what's the last one? this origin from not there okay so this open and closes just put a space there so it's easier to read we have this one opening and closing one open right now two open one open one open this takes care of that one Yes, this takes care of that one. 
if any of you are programmers, don't, don't be too harsh on me. I'm just learning. Hmm. I can't remember. Function, we have toggle, we have menu. Oh, those weren't wrong. Of course they're not. Why am I? Uh, oh well. We have the click, we have the toggle. We have function, we have function. We have uh, oh, we need the selectors, yeah. That's what's wrong. I just switched this back. Oh, that's cat flag. And oh. tool. Ah, try again. There we go. Yay. Mm. jQuery now is the user to do three things on a web page. Events, response to into user interaction, DOM manipulations, modify HTML elements on the page, yes, and add animations. Cool. So, JavaScript is a programming language used to add interactivity to a web page. So jQuery simply simplifies JavaScript syntax and makes it easier to build interactive web pages that work across multiple browsers. jQuery enables us to do three main things on a web page, and there are three things I just read. We will see how each of these things, uh, how to do each of these things in the next section. All right, yay, achievement. Okay, now we're in the core of um, Code Academy. So we have our editor here. We have what our site looks like here. Um, right now it's just a picture and this cool menu. Hmm. We should be able to click this and to close this up. Okay. Oh, that's a design choice. Okay. Uh, up here we have our tabs with our. This is our page in HTML. So you can see here we have. Uh, some fonts apparently yeah we have and another font that's open sans and we have a style sheet which is this one and we have some divs here uh, this div has a class called menu um, yeah and it ends down here. They have a really neat way of detecting this. Okay. And we have an image here and some list elements. So we have all these things in a list, right? About, block, help and contact right here. So this is the list right now. And <coughs> is in an unordered list in UL um, and this is our entire style sheet for the moment um, so we have some properties or some styles all the way down what I am guessing is that we need to recreate this project over here and make it look exactly like it so let's get started it says over here what we need to do click on the menu icon we did that click on the x icon we did that then click save and submit to get started okay let's hit the save and submit way to go next lesson all right now we only have the style sheet and the markup 
So right now, nothing happens when we press this. So, <coughs> let's see what this wants us to do. Sorry about that. Okay, so, right now, we are asked inside the app.js file, which is where we are now, we use the keyword var, which stands for variable. It's very quick to highlight if you've done something wrong. Okay. Um, so we make a function. Luckily, mm, maybe the glossary can help us. So here we have the glossary. And what is it telling us? Do we have some jQuery in here? Most HTML glossary. So we go in here and type J. Not much is happening, is there? That's weird. Oh, well, we can get a hint down here. It's ready. Ah, and this needs to be in parentheses. Ready. jQuery to select a class icon menu. So we do this and we do this. No, there we go. Icon menu. And just end it. And there we go. Okay. So we have the dot click notation here, which is an event listener that registers when something is clicked. Inside the click one, we add a function just as we saw earlier. Going to re enter it a bit, okay. And it says select the menu class and animate it, okay. So, first off, we select the menu class. Menu, ah, menu, rather. Mm. I may need a 
hit here. Okay, so we have a jQuery selector which is called animate. So let's use that. Whoops, there we go. Um, inside here we have some brackets. There we go. Okay. So we want left left property to be zero pixels. trailing color after this mm. hmm. we can okay this is 200 milliseconds zero pixels to the left over 200 milliseconds and end it there all right mm. right now we're just doing what we're told but the animate takes okay so the animate function takes two parameters. One is the CSS prop the first one is the CSS properties, which is this. And the second one is the time, which is just an integer. Uh, and it's time in milliseconds. Okay. Fair enough. And after this one we tell the entire body I think let's go to the index and find the class body I don't know no 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 okay so apparently you can select oh not top body it's not a class it's just the entire body so now it's looking for the actual tag body which is this one so if I wanted to animate over all divs I would write div in here is my guess I'm not you're really just watching me mess around but now we select the body and we also animate that and we need some brackets in here. We can maybe. This is now a bit more clear what these parameters are. Right. So here we have the first parameter. Here we have the second one. So they want it to be 200 milliseconds, so we add that. And just before the comma, we give it the first parameter, which is. We'll just have to indent this properly. So we'll just move it to the left again. And this time 285 pixels. And this needs to be in quotations. Alright. And I need to stop that one there. Okay to go. So right now nothing happens when we click here. This doesn't lead anywhere. But we can close the menu again. So boom boom boom. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Right here we have to just observe that nothing happens when we click X. So, next lesson. Alright. So, now we want to select in here the icon close. We 
which is the class our close button should have. Where is it? There it is. That's the image that we have here. That's just that's an image. And it has this this class. Alright. So we select the icon close. So when it's clicked, we select the same one again. Icon close, and we use the dot animate. Um, we like drag in here once more, and takes two parameters again. This time we want to move left yet again. And this time we're going to do it in negative 285 pixels. And this will also take 200 milliseconds. So this should work. But it Curious. Hmm. We're in the main function. Let's see what it says. Remember the app the, the code for menu inside close click. Oh it's of course it's because it's not the icon we are moving around, it's the menu. Let's try it again. Okay, now we forgot to set the offset. Hmm. Remember to add the code for body inside. I can close click. Aha! So that's what that's for. yet again and in here we left zero pixels let's see if that works and it does beautiful I would really like for this to also do the same as this but I guess it's a design choice later on. Maybe we can do that. That will maybe be the next video, but let's start the next, uh, next lesson. And it says congratulations. We have now successfully written a JavaScript program that does this. And it looks neat. Save and submit. Congratulations, you've finished the course. And I think this will be a good place to stop. And I will pause this here, and next time I will move along in this project. I hope you have a good night. And I'm happy to make these videos yet again. <laughs>